This is a bad time to bring up that I'm afraid of heights. I'm going to show you the spot where investigators are looking at very closely right now. There on that front wall near the newspaper dispensers, there are at least more than half a dozen bullet holes in the wall. Earlier today, they took their movement to the streets. Literally, dozens of people lie down on 4th Street on their stomachs with hands behind their backs in what's being called a, quote, die-in. Firefighters from Start, Hollywood, Rayville, and Delhi all responded to the scene as both of those trucks nearing the end of the line caught fire. It's too much of this, that's blockage, that's flooding. One truck, two, three, four, Five. That's the distance, Heather and Jared. Five truck widths right there. The truck drivers recommend that you keep between yourself and them. A vehicle that was carrying a mother and her four children was plowed into head on by a pickup truck when it crossed the center line and into them. All of them wound up injured, including the truck driver. And new details by West Monroe police say he was intoxicated. This was the scene on Cypress Street in West Monroe Monday night. Sirens blazing, wreckage in the streets, injured children. West Monroe police say a pickup truck drove down the street, crossed the middle line, and plowed head on into a vehicle carrying a mother and four children. New details are now coming to light. Once on scene, it was determined that the driver of the at-fault vehicle uh, was impaired. The accused drunk driver is 44-year-old Ricky O'Brien of Start. His arrest report reads an open Bud Light can was found between his feet in the truck, and he admitted to officers he'd had several beers along with oxycodone. O'Brien, the mother, and all four children were taken to the hospital. After treatment, O'Brien went somewhere else. He was booked into the West Monroe Correctional Center, where he was booked for uh, DWI 4th, uh, careless operation, as well as cited for open container of an alcoholic beverage inside of his motor vehicle. Arrest reports show O'Brien was arrested twice for DWI back in 2004 and arrested a third time in 2009 in Texas. Well, there are some passengers that are stranded here at Charlotte Douglas International Airport until Monday, even though their flights didn't intend to originally take them to this airport in the first place. All of these delays and all of this frustration stems from a single technical malfunction that wound up impacting flights across the East Coast. Airline passengers suddenly found themselves grounded Saturday. We're just pretty much stuck. We're not sure. We're working it out. The FAA reports on Saturday afternoon an automation problem at a Virginia air traffic center led to a widespread glitch that delayed flights along the East Coast. Like Samantha Toffix, whose flight from Newark was an hour late because the plane was being kept on the tarmac. There was a power outage at a tower somewhere. I didn't say where, just that there was a power outage that we were delayed. Both Wayne Leedy and Tina Jaton's flights to Baltimore were redirected mid-air. Halfway through, they said there's a power outage. The airlines are not allowed to go into Baltimore. They told us on the airplane that we were going to divert to Charlotte and land. Neither were given another flight Saturday. Work out a deal for us to get a car. And from there, we're going to just have to drive up to Baltimore from here. That's extra stress for Jaton, who has a party of 14. We're actually trying to get a rental car, but we can't get a rental car to get. There's no cars. There's no cars. Still, they both chose to face this challenge with a smile. The way I look at it, God has his ways, and this is his way of slowing us down, maybe. I don't know. Our vacation's not over yet. <laughs> Have another day or so. As for passengers like Tofik, she's just thankful she was able to get where she was going. Drive home to my parents' house and relax. <laughs> we made it. A lot of passengers still looking to make it tonight. Now, so far, the FAA is reporting that that automation system that experienced problems is now officially back in service. They've released a statement saying their efforts are ongoing to help flights return to normal operations. Reporting live in Charlotte Douglas International Airport, Nick Lawton, Time Warner Cable News. Take a minute and think about your arms and hands. They help us drive. They help us eat. They help us keep up at work and stay connected to the world. But just imagine living your life without them. Well, no blood. We did okay. For 
Tullus native Bill Bradford, that's been his reality every day since 1986, the day he was working on a building in Winfield, holding a piece of rebar in his hands when a transformer arced out. And it arced out and hit that piece of rebar. And it went in my arms and I had a set of keys in my pocket and blowed out the exit wound with my leg. Bradford remembers every moment of the shock. I thought my back was going to break because, you know, your muscles contract so tight. Then the transformer blew. He fell off the building and Bradford says that saved his life. I was dead when I left the top of the building. And when I hit the ground, my nose and my toes hit at the same time and it was enough compression and get my heart going. Bradford was a 29-year-old man who knew his loss the moment he hit the ground. My arms was up in front of me, and I knew I was going to lose them. Now, 28 years, 25 surgeries, and two prosthetic arms later, Bill wakes up, pours two cups of coffee grounds in the machine, and fires up the griddle. What you think? That's delicious. You got to get that right angle. Some tasks take a lot longer. Practice, 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 I guess you'd say. He plays with his dogs Coco and Jackie across the field of his Calhoun home. She's been the ball chaser ever since. Then he gets in his car and drives, something he's learned to do again. He even volunteered driving a food bank truck for a couple of years. I really enjoyed that. Go to all the different uh, Walmarts and Sam's and stuff like that. Pick up whatever food they was donating to go to the food bank. What's been one of the things you've missed most? Shooting. Shooting? Shooting. Now the former Marine says he tries to help wherever he can. He's worked with the Percy R. Johnson Byrne Foundation for seven years and was a prison evangelist for 11. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is my main thing. He also served as a certified peer visitor for Amputee Empowerment Partners based in Oklahoma City, counseling burn victims and amputees, adult and child alike. There is life after amputation. I mean, you know, they can still live a full productive life if they want to. Yes, there's going to be limitations with, with their life, but usually we all live with limitations anyway. Bill says he's relearned to do everything he used to do with arms to send the message to never give up, no matter what. And if a story can be told from the life of one man, it's a story of perseverance, a story of hope. Just con continue on. You might not make a mile in progress in one day, but you might make a few inches. Inches is all it takes. Not too bad, huh? Nick Lawton, Fox 14 News.